happen when the dead in Christ shall rise and then we which are alive we're going to be caught up together with them in the air and the reason it happened to Enoch is that he walked with God he pleased God and as the Lord has given us the faith the expectation that the time of our rapture too is coming you want to please the Lord every moment he says so even so we speak not as pleasing men, but God, which tries our hearts. For neither at any time used with flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Nor of men sought we glory. Neither of you, nor yet of others, when we might have been burdensome as the apostles of Christ. Galatians chapter 1. In Galatians chapter 1, we're looking at uh, what it means to get ready. What it means that you'll actually please the Lord. That the commitment of your life, every moment of your life, will be that you want to please the Lord. It tells us in Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? You know, there are some people in their lives, they do not have, you know, this kind of independent spirit. Independent in a good way now. To say that I know this is the truth. And I know this is God's word. And I know this is God's demand. And I know this is God's expectation of my life. And it doesn't matter who is pleased or displeased it doesn't matter who is happy or unhappy what god had called me to do and the life he had called me to live i want to live that life not as pleasing men there's some people that cannot stand the frowns of men they want you know favor and flattery and appreciation and praise every time and they will die without daily injection of the praise of men they cannot stand their ground and say this is the demand expectation of god for my life and that is the way i'm going to live paul the apostle said here is my commitment that i am not to please men but to please the almighty god who has sent me and that's what is going to take in your life for you to be able to say i am saved he saved me I'm redeemed. He redeemed me. I'm called into salvation to the kingdom. He called me. And I'm all the time looking unto Jesus, the author, and the perfecter and the finisher of my faith. It says, do I now seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. The Lord is preparing us for the rapture. And he's telling us that to do that and to make it, we must please the Lord at all times. We will in Jesus' name. I've read about Enoch. Now we're going to look at another example of the one that God took away without seeing death. It's, it's, it's a mystery to the people of the world for us. It's now a revelation. In Second Kings chapter 2, Second Kings chapter 2. I'm reading to you from verse 1, 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass when the Lord will take up Elijah. Uh, do you notice that word take? It says well, they couldn't find Enoch because God took him. And then it says here again concerning Elijah. 
The day that God will take up Elijah into heaven by one wind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said, unto him as the lord liveth and as i so liveth i will not leave thee so they went down to bethel in verse 3 and the sons of the prophets that were at bethel came forth to elisha and said unto him knowest thou that the lord will take away thy master from thy head today will take away for them it was revelation and then elisha said he said yea i know it hold your peace to him too it was revelation ahab was still over there for him that was a mystery for Jezebel, Jezebel was still alive. For her, it was a mystery. You know, the Jezebels of this world, the unbelieving women of this world, and the Ahabs of this world, the unbelieving men of this world, this rapture we're talking about will be a mystery. But for us, it is a revelation. And as God is revealing to us, we need to do what we need to know what do I do so that I'll be prepared for that revelation. You know, for the 50 people, sons of the prophets, they had the revelation. What did they do about it? Nothing. Do you know? Yes, I know. Hold your peace. They didn't do anything about it. And then you find Elisha. Yes, I know, but I'm doing something about it. I, you know, I always, I, I don't know, maybe because of my background, I always do this calculation, you know. I look at Elisha, just one person, and I look at all these 50, 50 people, and I say, hey, look at the church. Is it everybody that knows about the rapture that gets prepared? I say, perhaps not. What percentage would you think? I think we may not be too wrong. I will say ratio 1 to 50. That is, these 50 people, they knew that Elijah will be taken away. This is a man that has the power of God. This is a man that they've seen the prodigious things and the great things that the Lord did through this man. And now they knew he was going away. They just had the knowledge. They did nothing. But there was just one man, one versus 50, that said, yes, I know. It's going to be taken away. I'm going to do something about it. And when you think about the church, we've heard about the rapture, not just this church. I mean, all the evangelical churches, Pentecostal churches, and we've heard Christ is coming. Christ is coming. In many places, you hear Christ is coming. And yet, I'm asking, what are we doing about it? Are we back into the ratio 1 to 50? That's 2% of the whole of the whole people knowing that Christ is coming and they're doing something about it and they are preparing. Uh, and you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's in little, little things. I uh, will say we want to have, you know, a church, uh, our headquarters church here in UK, in uh, London. And then we say that now, to do that, we're not going to get the property free of charge. They're going to say, oh, church, deeper life, you're doing so great. We're going to donate this to you as just a free gift from the government of Great Britain. Wouldn't that be a new day? That's what you're waiting for. That's a mystery. But if we're going to have it, what are we going to do? We're going to bring money out. And if you understand that Christ is coming, you're going to say, after all, Christ is coming. After Christ has come and the church has gone away in the rapture. After the rapture, what will take place? Again. And when the great tribulation hits the world, who will be the ruler, the leader, the overall person, the emperor, the antichrist? How many people just say, I believe in the rapture, the rapture is coming, and reach only reach you two to hundred, one to fifty, are the people that are actually ready, they still want to, you know, keep their money and keep it there and keep it there. And then we're so slow that, you know, things, uh, sometimes we should have finished within about six months and just get going and get the property without owing debt to anybody. We're still just dragging our feet because 
because we know about the rapture, but we're not ready. The majority of people, and that's what the Lord is telling us, he is coming. It's no more a mystery to us. It's now a revelation. Do something with that revelation. We'll do it. I said we'll do it. And when I said we'll do it, it's not just London. You know, if you are going to have a central building, headquarters building like that, it's the responsibility of everybody, every local church. And it's not just something you just deal with, even on regional basis. Yes, I know it's regional, but then every local church and every member that identifies of the church, and you say, this is my church. When we finish, um, you know, our headquarters church, because it's headquarters for all of deeper life all over the world, uh, when we finish, I'll give you long notice, and, uh, you know, I'm going to invite you to be there. And then you will see what is going on in that place. But I want to tell you this. It's not just Lagos that is putting all that money down. All over Nigeria. All over Nigeria. In fact, you're seeing I don't want to branch off and tell some real great testimonies because of the commitment of the people from all over. From the villages, from the market women, from everyone that identifies with deeper life in Nigeria. In fact, I'll tell you this, that I wanted to go for a crusade. Are you all right are you doing okay do you have time why do I, do I do i care if you if you have time if you don't have the time i will take it i said i will take it praise the lord I wanted to go for, you know, a crusade somewhere in Nigeria, one of, uh, you know, states over there. And a minister of another church saw what they were doing. And he said, this is what you are preparing. And then he said, I'm not going to be out of this. I'm not a deeper life member, but I'm a Christian. And then he gave a large amount of money. When they called me and they said, you know, brethren, so and so, he gave and a large, large, when I say large, you know, when I say large, you, nothing must be large. And, uh, you know, not a member of Deeper Life. And when the Deeper Life members saw that, and they saw that somebody outside is so committed about what we're doing, and he gave this, I'm telling you, those people themselves, the insiders, they gave. And then when I got there and I saw the building, I said, what? There's just in the state. And, uh, you know, in Nigeria, we have this, and we have this, and we have that. And you think we're poor? We're rich in Christ. And if we could do that over there, you can do something over here. And you'll do it in Jesus' name. The point is, when we know about the rapture, we translate it to practical deeds and practical uh, events, and we make something happen because we know that Christ is coming. And then it goes on, if you look at verse 5, in verse 5, and the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Why is it like in every city, in all those locations, they had the knowledge. It was revelation for them. It was no more a mystery unto them. And all the same, they did nothing about that. In verse 11, it says, and it came to pass. As they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went down, up, went up by a whirlwind into where? Have you met some religious people that don't believe there's any heaven? They want to stay here forever? I'm not part of them. I believe there's a, in my father's house are many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. So that where I am, there ye may be also. He wants to come and take us to heaven. It will happen in Jesus' name. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. Acts, chapter 1. I'm reading to you from verse 9. Acts, chapter 1, verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, 
while they beheld, it was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward where? There's heaven. Toward heaven. As he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, who is the one coming back? The same Jesus, not another Jesus. The same Jesus, we're told, which is taken off from you into where? The angel said into heaven, May, and then he says, shall come in like manner as see I have seen him go into heaven. First John chapter 3. In first John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Verse 3, and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself, even as who? As he, Christ, is pure. That's what it will take. It will take holiness. It will take purity of life, purity of heart. It will take a real transformation of heart and life. Total change in our hearts and lives before we can make it in rapture. And I pray we'll make it in Jesus' name. Point number two, the future change through resurrection by Christ. The future change through resurrection by Christ in John chapter 5. John chapter 5, there is going to be a resurrection of the dead. In John chapter 5, verse 25, verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Verse 28, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming. In the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. All. Now he's talking about the just and the unjust. The righteous and the unrighteous. The saint and the sinner. It says all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life. When that resurrection takes place. The people who have done good, what does that mean? Because Jesus said there's no one that is good. Those who have been made righteous and good by his grace. Those who have come to Christ and the Lord has turned them around and their lives have been so touched to make them more than what they were before. Now those who have done good because they were touched and transformed by grace unto the resurrection.